Let me ask you something. Where are you now? Do you know? Who are you? Who am I? When I was young, I hated change. I hated when we renovated our house, and I didn't want to graduate from grade 6 because I thought I was getting too old. I hated the feeling of my life slipping away with every mundane hour of my life. In many ways, that's still how my family sees me. Not as I am today, but as I was in the past. When stars die, we see their light for years after they stop existing. In the same way as we and the stars are separated, we as humans are also separated. We are separated by the way we perceive the world around us and how our own individual times run wildly different from each other's. It's not a bad thing, it's just how it works. This distance between us just means that we have to take the time to explain what our realities are and take the time to understand and listen to other people. This is one of the ways in which we function as humans, and it's an example of how hard time and change are to grasp. Recently, my friend told me that she thinks I suppress things and that I don't take care of myself. I laughed because I thought she was wrong, <laughs> but I do. I'm constantly telling myself that I'm not enough, constantly telling myself to be different, to stop being me. I'm continually invalidating how I feel and telling myself that I shouldn't be feeling the way that I do. For a long time, I've been searching for a way to define myself, a way to explain myself to others and to me. I wanted to be able to fit myself into categories so that I'd be able to accept who I was and love myself. I was seeking a concrete and unchanging and binary sense of identity that is impossible for anyone to actually have. And all of this made me very angry and frustrated. I was a pretty hard person to be around. <laughs> because of this feeling, this repetitive thought, I tried to change to be someone else. It's a feeling that's very hard to explain, the wanting to be someone else. I became addicted to thoughts and feelings to fill this emptiness inside of me, desperately holding onto memories, the same thoughts over and over. They became all-consuming. It's hard when you are feeling something to see outside of it, because that is literally who you are and how you are living in that moment. And so I thought I couldn't change. I was scared that I would hate myself forever, be worthless forever. I can see now that the binary views that I had for my life were stopping me from allowing myself to feel everything that I have the capacity to feel. Stop me from loving myself and other people, and stop me from seeing the possibilities and the enormity of everything around me. How could I ever hope to define myself if I'm constantly experiencing new things, constantly growing and changing every day? I realize that we are so full of contradictions, and that this is not a bad thing, like I used to believe. I can be both very confident as well as being very loving, and neither of those compromises the other. Neither makes the other less a part of me. I still hate change sometimes, and at the same time, I need it in order to exist. Another thing I've learned is that I can change. I don't have to stay the same way I always was. In many ways, I am different from who I used to be. I'm constantly changing. So recently, my art has become a reflection of all these things that I've just talked about. I make art to see the time flowing by all around us. The time and the change that we all experience. The painfulness of living. I explore the tension between the flowing of time and the feelings that emerge within us. To feel everything it is to be human and stubbornly stuck in time. Addicted to thoughts and feelings. I try to make a space for myself to resist without feeling any pressure to be anything other than who I am so that I can move through life with grace, instead of pain and fighting. I try to create something that is a process of reflecting on emotions that I feel, and then a method of sparking change in myself and expanding my perspective on things. And in the way of binary views, I've learned that my work is not one thing. It is not concrete. It is changing just like me and everything around me. 
and I can use my work to love myself and allow myself to feel everything that I have the capacity to feel. So thank you for listening to this talk. I'd also like to thank Nyla for telling me to do this art talk, and I'd like to thank Chloe and Linnea for starring in my video.